Hello, Heart of the Lion Ministries. This is Evangelist Christian uh, back with you again. Once again, I'm going uh, live. I haven't been on here, I know, in a very long time. Quick, quick update. Um, I'm working on my website, and it's definitely taking a lot longer than I thought, even though I do have help. So uh, I appreciate your patience. But from here on out, it's still going to be over a month uh, before it is live. But I've gotten the most difficult stuff out of the way so I could start making uh, regular videos again before my website goes live. So that's just a little uh, background of why I haven't been on here, but I'm gonna start making them again. And I wanna give you a quick word of encouragement on the book of Daniel chapter 11. Now, I'm not gonna read this whole chapter, um, and, and this is my first attempt at kind of really trying to explain end time scenarios. However, I don't want to make this video 45 minutes to an hour, um, and I don't want to read the whole thing because I can definitely lose you, but I want you to read this whole chapter yourself. It's going to take that because from the book of Revelation and Daniel, they are tied together, which the Messiah, Christ Yahushua, will confirm as I read later. Um, they are tied together, but there is uh, definitely mystery involved and that's why in Christendom there is so many views on end times but I am going to speak to you what God has shared to me which is actually very encouraging but I'm just going to give to you what um, the Lord Christ Yahushua has given to me and in the book of Daniel what I want to encourage you I'm just going to throw it out here first before getting into the scriptures, as if you read this carefully, the Antichrist, which is being spoken here, even though some of the terminology and the grammar can seem a little, uh, how would you say this, not hazy, but very skipping scenarios, kind of, um, kind of jumpy, kind of here or there, then this happens, then that happens. But as you read this chapter, specifically between verses 20 to the end say like between verses 20 and 33 you're going to see what I'm talking about but I'm going to start quickly in the middle of the chapter because I don't want to take forever Daniel the book of Daniel you know the story uh he is um he is you know Shadrach Meshach and Abednego is the is uh his fr are his friends and um he's had He's excellent in interpreting dreams and having dreams and reinterpreting them. And he's having all these revelations of the end time where God says to shut up some of those things. So in chapter 11, it's talking about warring kings of the north and south, which are an antichrist network. It seems like there could possibly be some type of competition and jockeying for who is the antichrist, even though it can definitely be a single figure, but it's definitely a network, a power of networks that is ran by technology, as we see today, and an army of the de of Satan, of the Antichrist. And that's what the kings of the north and the south, I believe, are possibly speaking of. And I will say possibly because I understand how end-time words like Ezekiel, Daniel, and Revelation can seem to be a little ominous and tricky. But you're going to see what I'm talking about here. I'm going to start in verse 17 and read quickly to where I want you to see what I want you to see. That the devil actually is does not have a cakewalk in setting up his final empire, em, uh, empire the new world order. Verse 17. He shall. This is speaking of the kings of the north and the south, so I'm just jumping right in. Verse 17. He shall also set up his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and the upright ones with him. Thus shall he do, and he shall give him the daughter of women to destroy it. But she shall not stand with him or be for him. After this, he shall turn his face to the coastlands and shall take many. But a ruler shall bring the reproach against them to an end. And with the reproach removed, he shall turn back on him. So we see a confrontation already between kings. Then he shall turn his face toward the fortress of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. 
we're already seeing some failings of these kings of the north and the south. And you're going to see where I'm going to tie these kings into here very soon. Verse 20. Then shall arise in his place one who imposes taxes on the glorious kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed. Once again, failure, destruction. But not in anger or in battle. And in his place shall arise another vile person, a vile person, to whom they will not give honor the honor of royalty. But he shall come in peacefully and seize the kingdom with intrigue. With the force of a flood, they shall be swept away from before him and be broken, and also the prince of the covenant. And after this, and after the league is made, some type of pact, peace treaty, which you probably have heard and uh, spoken of in the end time teachings of what's going to happen. And after the league is made, some type of uh, covenant and peace pact, a false peace, is made with him he shall act deceitfully for he shall come up and become strong with the small number of people he shall enter peacefully even into the richest places of the province and he shall do what his fathers have not done nor his forefathers so he's definitely rebellious and probably along the lines of some type of atheism or communism of some sort because even if he is a Jew, a counterfeit Jew, he's regarding none of the religions of his forefathers. He's rejecting them. Verse 24, He shall enter peacefully into the richest places of the province, and he shall do what his fathers have not done, nor his forefathers. He shall disperse among them the plunder, spoil, and riches, and he shall devise his plans against the strongholds, but only for a time. He shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south, with a great army. Here, are the, there's this battle. I'm reading through these battles of the north of the south. But he shall not stand, for they shall despise plans against him. Yes, those who eat of the portion of his delicacies shall destroy him. His army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. Both these kings, the north and the south, both of these kings, there seems to be a jockeying of some sort for this antichrist power and network and position. Both of these kings' hearts shall be bent on evil, and they shall speak lies at the same table. They're kind of in league and covenant. They're on the same path. They're with each other, trying to do the devil's bidding for the most part. But it shall not prosper, for the end will still be at an appointed time. While returning to his land after these defeats, while returning to his land with great riches, his heart shall be moved against the holy covenant, so he shall do damage and return to his own land. And what's that holy covenant? That's the covenant. That's God's people. That is us. The holy covenant is the commandments and the calendars, the calendar of God, the word of God. And that is us. God is uh, Satan hates those who keep God's commandments and follow his word and follow his calendar versus the counterfeit calendar that has been set up and given to the church um, or just not walking in the righteousness of God's word at all. But the key word that God gave me that was showing me that I want to share with you is that this is an end time prophecy concerning the end empire because it says not only do this this king and these kings fail and slaughter each other and destroy each other, seems like some type of civil war and disagreement of some sort. It says, they shall speak lies at the same table, but it will not prosper for the end will still be at an appointed time. We see in this word that this is a prophecy that the Antichrist is actually going to try to escalate the end times to bring it in sooner than the final, final line in the sand that God has drawn and has allowed him to bring. Because of his lust for power and his wickedness, he's going to many times, it, sh it, it appears, try to execute and bring in this Antichrist end time network, the new world order, but it's going to fail many many times and that's what i want to share with you and encourage you with that this end time you know battle of armageddon the end times revelation 
the devil, the Antichrist, his army, they don't have a cakewalk like the devil wants you to think. And why, why do I want to encourage you and share that with you? Number one, God gave it to me to share with you, but it's so you can occupy and not roll over. We're not here to roll over and give territory over to the devil, regardless of what we think of the end times. We're here to occupy and to pray down the governments of hell and decree that the governments of of the of this earth are becoming the governments of our God in heaven. And what more encouragement than to see that there are generations that bring down his early attempts and at execution at a new world order, at an antichrist network and empire. And the reason, one of the reasons, or there are a few reasons that we know that it's not time yet, that it doesn't happen until there is a third temple that is built. And we're going to get into that now. But the whole, much of the book of Daniel is a prophecy of 70 weeks. And it is known in Bible study that a week stands for a year. And as you do your study, 69 of those have come to pass. And there is one more year week left, which is a seven-year period that people talk of Jacob's trouble, which we have three and a half years of peace, and he turns the other three and a half. So it's really three and a half years of, of terror. He establishes this peace treaty like I just spoke with, with flatteries, with a false peace, an alliance, it seems like of some sort, between governments and between nations. So the last seven years starts with the confirmation of a covenant of a false peace. And this takes place, like I said, when the third temple is built. For three and a half years, the pact, after three and a half years, like I mentioned, it is broken. And the sacrifices that are restarted, which haven't even happened yet, are stopped. So we can see we're not really at that point yet for him to have the stage that God has allowed right now, today, even though we are really, really, really close. And every day we're a day closer. But we're not quite exactly there yet. So don't let the devil lie to you and lie to you and activate a... Uh, I, what would you call this? A passiveness of just letting the devil do what he wants to do. No, that's not what the body of Christ is called to. We are called to occupy, which is to preach the gospel and to take control of the mountains that are still on the earth while we're breathing. So let me further confirm that we are not in that scenario, end time scenario of the Antichrist yet. By the verses I mentioned also on top of Daniel 11. And that's Matthew 24. Let's confirm that. Matthew 24, 15. It says, Therefore, this are, these are Jesus' words, Christ Yahushua, the Messiah. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, the Messiah knew was reading the book of Daniel. It's confirmation. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, and then it says, whoever reads, let him understand. You must have the Holy Spirit to fully understand what God is saying. And God made the end times a little, um, I wouldn't say murky, but only his true people are going to understand what's happening because he's keeping things hidden from the devil because the devil doesn't have complete understanding of the word. He knows enough to twist it and to trick us. And then it says in verse 16, let those who are on Jesus, then at that time, when that happens, the abomination of desolation is set up in the new rebuilt temple and the sacrifices are stopped, which haven't restarted again. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down and take anything out of his house. Because then you have three and a half years of peace to prepare, or apparent peace. It's a false peace. But you have a little bit of time to prepare before it really gets terrible, as these warnings would stay. Verse 19. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing in babes in those days. And he gives the warning. And I want to encourage you, 
a side note with it, I, I'm not, I actually grew up in, you know, a rapture uh, theology concept. Um, but I, I do want to confirm with you while we're in Matthew uh, 24, let's go to the end of uh, verses 29 through 31. It's not the end, it's the middle. But uh, this section, 29 through 31, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give his light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then the sun, it says immediately, verse 29, notice that. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the Son of Man shall appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a gr great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. The gathering of the elect doesn't take place till after the tribulation, after we go through things, which the lukewarm will have a tough time surviving, but it'll be the faithful remnant who are walking in covenant, in his commands, in the Torah, in the word of God. We know the Le Levitical aspect has been done away with and fulfilled, but who are obeying his word, his calendar, his commandments. The Bible even says those who don't follow his commandments aren't really his. I'll let you find that one in the New Testament. And so, <clears throat> anyhow, side note, but not really. We're not going anywhere. It is time to occupy. It is time to raise up. It is time to get serious with God, with Christ Yeshua. Get the leaven, which represents the sin. Get the sin, the leaven out of our lives and allow God to disciple you to burn up the old man and renew the new man on a daily basis walking not whipping yourself but walking in the fear of the lord repentance thankfulness worship allowing god to continue the work on a daily moment by moment basis we are not going anywhere christ comes back at the end after the tribulation whether you want to call that the rapture and the second coming, that's up to you. I don't see to, to I know the other verses that are used with that. I don't see um, two uh, instances. If it does happen, praise God, I don't really see that. I'm just speaking what the Bible is clear on, that he does return after the tribulation of those days. So it's time to get strong. I want to encourage you, the devil does not have a cakewalk at all. Setting up his new world order and setting up the final Antichrist seven-year empire. Actually, read that chapter. I'm really giving it to you so you can read it yourself and see he fails many times. And there seems to be a jockeying for position for the Antichrist position or positions under him. We could see there's a lot of failure, loss. They fight each other. And who knows? There might be some of God's armies that makes them fall and they're destroyed by. But there is loss before the final end time. And that confirmation, one more time, is in Daniel 7. I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 11, verse 27. Both these kings shall be bent on evil and they shall perish and speak lies at the same table. But it shall not prosper for the end will be at the said appointed time they are trying to usher and execute the end times early but it fails because god has the final say so and they're doing it early and it's not time yet so we see there's failed attempts and i praise god hallelujah that he will continue to fail on our watch so that more people can come into the kingdom of heaven and i believe that will happen because i believe god is shaking things right now we need to decree god's word like never before as people are seeing things i believe the church is also being set up and equipped for the also at the same time as we're seeing these shakings the church is also being equipped and set up for one of the greatest harvests that it's ever seen in its life as well rejoice 
the devil is failing now and this is the time he is to fail because the third temple like i've showed you it is not time yet for his appearance though the spirit is here the attempts are here the attempts are happening yes it's going to happen it's happening now but the third temple has not been erected yet the abomination of desolation has not been erected so it is not his time right now pray that into the atmosphere and decree that the kingdoms of our god are crushing the kingdoms of this world regardless of exactly however the details are coming to an end in the end times it's time to occupy it's time to rise up it's time to get strong it's kind time to believe the impossible into your life it's time to shake off the fear because the fear is the enemy of the Lord the fear is the enemy of man the devil knows what he does by fear this is why he has all these frequencies and technologies targeted at us when he hit Peter's mind when he was walking on water before the Lord he sunk Fear is a weapon of the devil and his agents and his army. Shake it off. Get the courage of God. Occupy. Go out. Do what God has called you to do in your life. And you're going to see the miraculous kingdom of God manifest in everything that you're doing. Believe and expect what you're, what you're praying for and what you're decreeing in the atmosphere. And you are going to see it in ways. And you're going to take down governments you're going to take down the jurisdictions and territories that you're in because that's why you're there you're there not just to survive you're there to thrive you're there to survive but thrive and to speak the judgments of god on those principalities that have kept people bound and imprisoned in those neighborhoods that you're in the cities that you're in go out and do it for the kingdom's sake because at the cross of Calvary, God defeated, Christ defeated every enemy. He defeated them all. So when we're praying, we're just working out what he already worked in, even for your enemies. Because he destroyed everything. Satan's just using them to destroy themselves, those who are attacking you. So regardless of how the evil is packaged, Christ has already um, defeated the devil at the cross when we're praying it we're asking God to unlock it and manifest it into the kingdom into the physical realms it's the best thing you could do even for your enemies is to speak those judgments upon those principalities in, in your neighborhoods and your cities so that people can be free really you're not you're not directing it towards flesh you're directing it towards the, the 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 spiritual powers and demons and darkness so people can make a decision freely to either reject him or to come to christ but the devil is failing and he will fail many times and he's failing now because it is not his time the abomination of desolation in the temple is not erected yet as we have connected the dots those scriptures once again is daniel chapter 11 the whole thing but the keys really is between verses 20 and 28 and as we keep going into 29, it talks about he talk, he targeted, he targets the people of the covenant, those who are keeping the covenant of God, which is proof that it's the Ten Commandments and his holy word, righteousness, holiness, and his feasts are to be kept. And those are the ones that get targeted in the end time because we're doing what God's called us uh, to do. But... um and the feast, what I mean by that is not the sacrificing of animals and all that, even though that's going to happen in the end time temple. It's um, just observing his calendar. It's a battle of timelines and calendars. Like it was a battle of trees in the garden. It's a battle of observances and obedience and what God said to observe versus what Satan has given us as a counterfeit on our Gregorian calendar. And you can look that up and, and, and know what I mean. Most of our holidays are replacing God's holy days, uh, especially in the United States here and all over the world and the globe. Daniel 11, yes, thank you, Daryl, for posting that. And to confirm the rest, read Matthew 24. The whole chapter is a good idea, but specifically verses 15 and verses 29 through 31 for Matthew 24. I hope that encouraged you. God bless you. I appreciate your prayers. Everyone who will watch this later, I once again, I just did this live because it's just easier this way and I'm going to connect this over to YouTube. I'm looking to get help with that channel as well. 
YouTube since I'm not really a huge, huge techie and that's why I have a web developer as well uh, with the website that people are working on. Father, I pray that this word has blessed many people to not put down the swords, the spiritual sword that God has put in their hands and in their mouth to decree your word and to pray, Heavenly Father, your government and your kingdom into their spheres, into their atmosphere, Father. Raise up the body of Christ. May the fire of Elisha, the glory and fire and power of God, rest on every single person watching. May they fulfill everything that their destiny scroll is written of them, that everything you have called them to do in Yahushua's mighty name. Until next time, you and your family remain blessed. Take care.